I wanted to take a look back at my Sony Xperia 1, the very first one, before any of the Marks 2s and 3s and 4s and all the rest of it, because I was looking at getting a Sony Xperia Mark 4 that's announced to come out, I believe, September for the channel because I absolutely loved my Xperia 1. And I went to see the price, $15.99 for a slab device in 2022. And I'm not going to hate on them. I'm really not for the price because I understand the plan. I understand what they're trying to do. I understand that they're trying to target creators and YouTubers and all the rest of it. People that are just really into their cameras and, and having the, getting into the granular aspects of the, of the video modes and all the rest of it. And the pro camera mode that was even on this one was, was quite nice. In fact, let me see if I could boot that up here for a second. We'll see it a little bit later on. It's fantastic. But the idea is disappointing to me so i'm not going to hate on them but at the same time i'm not going to celebrate that because i think these devices really had a slot at the consumer level the only thing and they provided quality this is a beautiful device this is the best purple i've ever seen on a phone fantastic high quality build you have the metal frame you have the glass front and back and a nice little led there you have the overpowered basically 4k OLED display, which was is phenomenal to look at. And I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. And I always wanted a shot to re-review this device or go back over it because in my first video, it was early on and people thought I was hating on it by saying it's not for everybody and highlighting kind of the deficiencies of the device. But on the other end, the things that it really excels at, like that 4K display, it's okay for devices to not appeal to everybody. It's okay for them to be not so hot in some areas if they're absolutely off the charts in others. It's nice to have variety when it comes to cell phones, something we've certainly been lacking. And so that's what really hurts me when we take Sony out of the consumer business, essentially put them in some sort of pro mode, professional consumer grade devices, as opposed to staying down here where it's on par price wise with a Samsung or an iPhone or a Google Pixel. I think that's where it really, uh, where the sadness comes in because we're essentially losing another phone maker. We're essentially saying goodbye to another competitor that's just leaving the landscape wide open at the flagship level for Google, for Samsung, and for the iPhone. I think that we've lost LG. Moto's basically been off in the wilderness for a while. Nokia is trying to get a foothold with their budget devices. It, it, one plus now has been basically laughed off the stage when it comes to the flagship territory devices so it's disappointing to then see Sa sony say all right you know what forget it we're going to do pro kind of consumer devices 1600 bucks if you need it you need it you know if you need it if you don't then you don't and i think when it comes to at least marketing in the united states the issue was never the device itself they gave a great experience i love the way android runs on it i love their skin which is pretty uh pretty stock really no issues there fantastic display and i i've often told people that a good 1080p panel can absolutely hold the tone with a good 1440p panel my eyes and a lot of times you know between the two eh, your eyes can kind of you could eh, you don't really make out the difference a lot of times when it's 2k versus when it's just a 1080p display this 4k display you can absolutely tell the difference and how gorgeous this display is when you're watching content when you're watching netflix on that wide angle cinema type display fantastic the detail is amazing when you're reading things just the sharpness of the fonts and the textures an amazing experience these guys come out with these 4k panels and it is a great great viewing experience when you take a look at that love the notification led love the fact that they're not afraid to give us kind of a squared off experience even though it's a little bit rounded here you get the notification you get a little bit of a bezel that's not the end of the world especially when you're doing the camera stuff you have something to hold on to when it comes to the device to me it wasn't the hardware the internals are great snapdragon 855 which is still going to go probably going to go down in history as one of my favorite snapdragons of all time for just how power efficient it was yet still powerful enough to do anything and everything that you'd want to do with it the ram came in a little short i think it was six gigs on this one for 2019 that was a little 
on the light side. But otherwise, the cameras were great. I love the expandable storage. I love the fact that they carried on what a lot of the Nokia devices had back in the day. Is that why do we need a tool to access our removable storage or our SIM card? Why can't we just have something like this where you just get your nail in there and bam, you've had it removed. And there's still the gasket for the water sealing, the water rating and all the rest of it. You just push it down, make sure you secure it properly, seat it, see if we can get that to focus. You seat it properly, you got no problem, but you still got the little tab there to go ahead and pull it out. USB-C charging, decent speakers on the device, just overall fantastic. So it wasn't hardware, it wasn't software. To me, the reason that the Xperia devices just didn't catch on in the United States was it seems to be that if we don't have carrier deals or some sort of promotion with either T-Mobile or Verizon or AT&T or at the time even Sprint, your phone goes nowhere. Your phone goes nowhere, especially when we were talking. This device was expensive for the time. I think it was $11.99. might have even been $12.99 when it first came out. So that was a big, uh, listen, it's not a small ask. It's a big ask, especially when you're, you have people used to paying that for phones, especially with the iPhone and Samsung devices, but they're doing it in a way where they're paying $36 a month. And the only places I saw this device stateside was Best Buy. And they had one little kiosk off in the distance, off barely to the side of the other cell phones where you could take a look at this device. And it just didn't, it, they didn't seem to promote it that well. And as fast as it was in Best Buy, it seemed like it was out of Best Buy. And he didn't have that ability to get it through the carriers for the most part. I mean, if, if you put this on AT&T, let's say you got it through Amazon, which I eventually did at a discounted price. I think I paid $700-ish dollars from mine, which was a great deal, and it was shortly after launch. It was only about six or seven months after launch, and I loved mine, but the goofy thing about it was, if you had the international version of this, and you tried it on AT&T, it wouldn't let you do group messaging. <laughs> it wouldn't let you do group messaging. It wasn't allowed on AT&T after a while. You had to get it reprovisioned, and eventually the Mark IIs and threes and fours, they are eventually the four, they had less of an issue with on AT&T, but it was just weird. It was just weird, and people, people wound up just avoiding them as opposed to ponying up $1,200 out of pocket for a device they weren't entirely confident will run on their carrier. If they got the international, if they got the U.S. one, you were mostly okay. But it just seemed like the only failure to me of the Sony devices was not being in that store. And that really has become the failure of the U.S. cell phone market. They have Verizon and AT&T and T-Mail have such a stranglehold on uh, what your eyes get put in front of. And a lot of it's because of the financing that they're able to provide, okay? You know, even with those mid-tier devices that you could get from overseas, you're talking six, $700 out of pocket, or you're talking $25, $30 a month you never really see. Comes out of your bill and you just kind of go on and after a year or two, you trade it up for the next one and you're paying the, the same amount in perpetuity and you don't even care, right? So it, it, it's an, a, a, until those other mid-range manufacturers and the Sonys of the world. Now, they have a firm, I think, now. They'll allow you payments now on their website for the Mark IV, but I think it's already too late. I don't think that device is going to be there for a lot of people. I don't think regular consumers should get that device. Unless you're a pro doing pro editing and, and, and pro shooting, and you need the, like I said, we could pull into the the Camera Pro. Let's see, while using the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allow. It's a really cool piece of software. Like, look at the level of detail you get to have when you're talking what you're doing on your camera. You get the levels over here. You get the different modes that you'd be in. You get recording. You can get your, your lens, whatever. You get your ISO, your shutter. I think, yeah, there you go. Your resolution, your frames per second, your FPS. It's just a great overall camera experience and nice. And they're just going to get that better. So they're leaning hard into the pro mode stuff. And I get that. But it's disappointing to me because I think that I think they really had a shot at the consumer level because they provided a great device and they've exited that market. And that's a shame. And I and I understand I'm not going to hate on them for, for charging $1,600 because they know what their niche is and they're going to lean into that. I just felt that if given a chance, a proper chance on the playing field with all the other devices, that Sony absolutely 
had a chance at the consumer level when you're talking $1,000, $1,100, when you're going up against your Samsung devices. And any sort of competition is good. It's every other day we're talking about somebody that's just going to, that's off in the wilderness now, that we just lose. And there's just no competition for Samsung and iPhone and Google. You know, bless their hearts, they try. <laughs> I just don't think they're really pushing Samsung or Apple that hard just yet. You know, at certain price points, maybe they're trying. But I think that we we need somebody up there now that OnePlus and LG and now Sony have, have kind of gone away. Disappointing. They had some good hardware, good software, nice stock software, had great integration with their cameras, with their pro cameras. You could do Wi-Fi stuff and use this as kind of a monitor. And they're leaning into that and the pro pro level stuff now. But just I think it's a shame that we, we went ahead and lost another one. Basically lost another manufacturer that's now not going to compete in the space, in the flagship space with your Samsungs and your iPhones. It's a shame. Really nice phones. I don't know if we'll wind up getting, uh, if we do, it won't be for video purposes. It'll be for me just to do video stuff for the channel if we wind up getting a Mark IV. But we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll review it either way if we wind up getting one. But the most gorgeous purple I've ever seen on a device. And not only that, tell me the other phone that you do Winnie the Pooh case. All right? Stop it. Go ahead and put this on. Just one last... One last time on camera here. Come on, Wendy the Pooh case. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.